Welcome to Revolution 935 FM, Miami's home of dance music. And I'm Natasha from the JP Morning Show, and I'm sitting here with Alec Monopoly and Alexa Dianos. Welcome. How are you guys today? Thank you for having us. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Alec here. Yes, first time in the studio, right? Yes. So thank you so much for coming. And I wanted to start off by asking you about Art Basel 2019. We just wrapped up, but it seems like you are still going, right? What's, what's going on right now? You're still working on something. Yeah, wow. We came in a week early to start Art Basel, to start doing murals and stuff like that. And uh, we are still working. We just started a mural two nights ago. Chris Brown just got into town from Saudi Arabia. Awesome, awesome. And uh, I mean, we're pretty exhausted. I think everyone in Miami is exhausted and tired for Basel. I bet, yeah. But they came in super hot, full of energy, well rested. So uh, yeah, so we've been painting all night each night, um, you know, it's- Can you tell us where it is or how can we find that one that you're working on right now? Okay, so the wall we're working on is at the Exxon gas station okay. on Alton Road in South Beach, which is really interesting because there, there are very few graffiti murals in South Beach. So it's, we're blessed to have a good wall there and it was great timing that I hadn't started the wall yet. And then when Chris Brown was landing here in Miami, well, he was actually gonna go back to LA from Saudi Arabia okay. and I was talking to them, you know, one of his boys, Lo, and he was like, maybe we'll come to Miami. And I was like, dude, I got a sick wall, come. So they, they redirected the jet to Miami. To come okay, awesome. Especially <laughs> to do the wall with us. Oh my goodness, Art Basel. So is it your first time collaborating together with other artists or? No, this is, this is our third mural we've done together. Oh, okay. We, we did the first one, I think it was in 2013. So oh, wow. yeah, me and Chris go way back. He's an amazing guy. I mean. I don't know what he doesn't do. He's so talented. Right? He dances, makes music, and he's a very talented artist. And I think it's important when you do a collaboration with another artist that your work um, looks good together and it isn't similar. You know, our work is so different. Yeah. You can distinguish between who's who. So I think it's important when you're doing a collaboration with another artist that you have very opposite styles. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I noticed that. I checked it out yesterday. And we'll get back to that in just a minute because I want to talk more about that mural. So being Alec Monopoly, can you, can you kind of guide me through the process of like, let's say our Basel weekend. So from beginning to end, like what the preparation is, what it takes to kind of get those live art shows going. I know that you had Rick Ross at one of your shows. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that process. Yeah, so basically Art Basel for me is two facets. We have the gallery that is open at Satai and it's actually not a pop-up gallery. It's a permanent gallery at Satai where we're selling work. And then we do an event for collectors and friends and fans that's more of like a party event where we have okay. art exhibited and it was at my good friend Billy Dean's house. He's got this beautiful villa mansion on Pine Tree Drive. So we had the party there and uh, it was a beautiful layout. The, the, it's a house that's on the water and there's a huge grass yard where we had large blow up money bag balloons. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What were those made? Like, how did that even come about? Like, they're, they were like, how big were they? They were, some were like 10 feet tall. It was, it was just like a fun installation. It was interactive. Yeah. People could jump on them and bounce on them. So that was a fun aspect. And then we had some artworks there. I had some of my sculptural artworks and canvas works. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we had uh, my good friend Luciano DJing okay. to open up and, and, and kind of start the party and get the vibe right. I love deep house music and I'm, I'm a big fan of Luciano. Awesome. Well, you're in the right place for that. Exactly. <laughs> so I love Luciano. I mean, I think he's an amazing artist in his own because he's kind of a pioneer in the Deep House mm -hmm. world. So, Very cool. So um, we, had, we had Luciano and then we had uh, Rick Ross close out the party, which was, which was legendary. You I know? could imagine. Yes, of course. And you were there as well, right? Yeah, definitely. Always. <laughs> it looked like a great time. Yeah. But so tell me about like what your journey was from, you're from New York, right? Yeah. So you came from New York. How did you blow up in Miami? Like what even brought you to Miami in the first place and kind of tell us that journey? Well, I've been coming and visiting Miami for, for many years. I mean, since I was a kid, my family would come down here, but it, w it wasn't until I think around 2006, I started coming to Art Basel. Okay. And that's when I was just like, you know, kind of a student learning from other artists, being inspired, meeting other artists, going to art shows, and just dreaming one day I would exhibit in Art Basel. And it, it, was till, it wasn't until 2013 I had my first show in Art Basel, and it was okay. a huge success. And every year we've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, 
And I'm proud to say that we have one of the best presences, at, we have one of the best events, and we have a large presence here at Art Basel. We have murals all yeah, over Wynwood. Mm -hmm. How, know, many, how many do you have up now? I would say almost uh, one, two, three, I'd say about six or seven. Okay. I've, um, you know, past years I did murals when I was living in LA and I would just do the mural and then leave. So a lot of the local graffiti writers, you know, after you leave, they, you know, I, I, I kind of get where the graffiti, local Miami graffiti writers come from, where all these artists come in, paint all over all their, all their streets, right. all their turf, mm -hmm. and then just leave. So um, my walls would get gone over and, and, and uh, painted over after I left. Now right. that I'm kind of a Miami local, I'm, I've made friends with the local graffiti writers. Right. And I collaborate with Tesso. He's an amazing local guy from the 004 Connect crew. Okay. And now that they've showed love and I've showed love to them and we have this great partnership, no one touches our walls and they have respect. And, right. and, and, and it's great. It's a great feeling having your art respected and cherished and up on the wall. And that's what I wanted to ask. There's like some kind of symbol or something that's placed on something like that, right? Where people, like other artists are not supposed to come and paint over, correct? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's, there's always kind of a, a, a conflict between you know, the underground and, and being commercialized. And I try to be very careful on, you know, being too commercial, but okay. I can also, I can't really help that my notoriety and fame has gotten to be so big that people would view me that way. But, you know, just deep down inside, I'm just an artist and I do, I'm just following my passion. Yeah, of course. And you started, did you always start with that same like the Monopoly symbol, or did you kind of work your way into that? Yeah, so um, I started painting the Monopoly Man in 2008 okay. when the first economic crisis started. So I was watching Bernie Madoff on the news and playing the game Monopoly, and it was so, such an ironic moment seeing Bernie Madoff being arrested for all, of, all, of, you know, all the stuff that he was doing in Wall Street. Right. And so I started painting him as Mr. Monopoly. Okay. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try painting Mr. Monopoly. So it just, it was kind of a meta narrative of what was going on in Wall Street. And then I started doing it as graffiti in the streets. And then it, it you know, that's when it started building and people started identifying me as Alec Monopoly. And Got it. it just grew from there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, very well respected. And I know that, you know, many, many people around here in Miami know of you. We see your art all over the place. And one thing I wanted to mention to you, so yesterday, going back to the mural that you were painting with Chris Brown. So a kid actually came up to me because I was watching you, you know, spray the wall. And this kid comes up to me and he goes, oh, you know, he sees the G-Wagon, he sees the Lambo, and they're both wrapped with all of Alec Monopoly's painting. And he was asking me, kind of like suggesting, like, how can I get that on my mom's car? <laughs> and it was, it was so cute because I was like, oh, you know, like, I didn't have the right answer, you yeah. know? And I'm like, I'm not sure, you know, if your mom will be able to do this either. But, um, and it was awesome because, you know, he was really interested. And I yeah. wanted to ask you, like, how you feel about impressing, you know, kids or, like, the, the future and the youth, like, with your art. Like, do you think it's a, the right symbol or how that could influence our kids today? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I have, like, a, a huge body of work. I don't mm -hmm. just paint Mr. Monopoly and money bags all day long. Mm -hmm. I, I create other artworks that are, like, iconic portraits of, of important people, like Nelson Mandela. I did uh -huh. a portrait of M Nelson Mandela that's in the Nelson Mandela Foundation in South Africa. So Congratulations. A lot, of, a lot of people just kind of focus on me just painting Monopoly and money in this, but, but I really have a diverse portfolio of work, mm -hmm. and... Um, I really enjoy inspiring these kids, and I hope that I have, you know, influenced the next generation of artists with showing work that is a positive nature with bright colors and fun and happy and stuff like that. So right. um, uh, I just hope that I've done, a, uh, done some amazing work and I've inspired some kids. Yeah, I know, for sure. And, you know, sticking to that theme of, do you mind if I grab the mic so I can pass it to her as well? <laughs> So sticking with the theme of, you know, being an influencer and I think both of you have over a million followers like on Instagram and I'm not sure what other social media platforms. I think you both started YouTube channels as well, mm -hmm. correct? So, you know, I was talking to you a little bit before we started and, you know, asking like, do you consider yourself to be a social media influencer or like what would you call yourself? I don't really like to use the word influencer just because I feel like I'm 
a lot more than that. And I feel like a lot of people that do my kind of work mm -hmm. would feel the same. So it's just kind of like being a photographer and a videographer and an editor and like a producer all in one. Mm -hmm. um, but aside from that, um, I studied to be a journalist. So okay. I was in the, like, in the route to be a TV host and I was working at a station and I decided that I wanted um, creative freedom over my platform and I kind of just wanted to grow. So I took okay. that gamble and just stopped working for somebody and just started working for myself. And so how did it even begin? Like, was it with just one picture? Have you kind of like um, changed your profile or? I definitely don't have like a, I don't think there's like a formula to what I've done. It just kind of grew on its own. Okay. Um, I didn't really expect for it to like grow so quickly in, mm -hmm. a, in just a year. Um, oh wow, it's just been a year? It's just been like a year that it, it grew like over a million. My okay. Instagram, um, I just started YouTube, so I don't really have followers on there yet, but it's just a lot of fun for me, which is the same as Instagram. I didn't really do Instagram to make a living in the beginning. It was just mm. kind of fun. And I liked posting photos and I liked just expressing everyday life. So it kind of just happened. And I feel like that's happened for some people, but um, it's more so like what you do with it. What, yeah, yeah, what comes next, you know? Cause once you have the following, you need to like create something. So I'm know? sure, you know, a lot of girls and even including myself, you know, I don't have even near to <laughs> a million followers and you, you're hopeful that especially being in this kind of industry, you know, in anything media related, that your following is going to grow, right? Absolutely. That you have some sort of presence. I think so. more than my following growing, I want my following to be strong. I've noticed mm -hmm. recently that like everybody is in, a, in this race to get like more millions of followers. Mm -hmm. Once you already reach a certain point, nothing's good enough. So I feel like I just want my followers to be um, very a strong following, strong fan base where they engage with me, where yeah, they, of course. you know, like my products, where they yeah. like what I'm selling. You create too. your own community. Right. And like they can talk to me and give me feedback They're Like, I love that. I've realized like talking to people, to my following, mm -hmm. it helps so much to grow and get to know people. And like, even still to this day, when people ask me for a photo, I'm just like, really? Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? That you? <laughs> so, so it's really nice and rewarding that part. <laughs> is there any, is there... Is there any advice that you would want to maybe give people as far as like, w like you know, how, how can you do it? Yeah, uh, definitely like be consistent be with consistent. whatever you want to post. Like it doesn't have to be just one thing. You don't have to have just like people say sometimes like just stick to one thing, just stick to like one. Yeah, like have like yeah, your niche. Like one niche. But that hasn't been my like that hasn't really been what I've done. So I can't mm -hmm. give that advice. But I think consistency is more important. Yeah, for just, sure. Just like. If you're in a bad mood or something, like just still go through with it. Still post, still engage with your fo fans and your following. You don't have to be perfect. Yeah, so yeah, of course. I've kind of learned that as I go because I was, I, I still am such a perfectionist. Yeah. I would go months without posting on Instagram and it just wouldn't grow. Yeah, exactly. So it's like you have to really be present for people to like get to know you, mm -hmm. you know? And so keeping up with, you know, like how you said, keeping up with the consistency and stuff, I'm sure that that's something that's played out even in your career is, you know, maybe some people might have, you know, considered, um, you know, oh, like how you said, some people might identify you as just a Monopoly yeah. character and just the, you know, the dollar signs and stuff like that. So how has consistency helped you throughout your career as well? Yeah, I mean, for me... Or not quitting, you know? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, creating artwork and... Creating new things is probably the most important thing of being an artist. And uh, it took me almost half of my life to figure out the direction of my work, the style of my work. It was just like you had to be very consistent and just working every single day right. to come up with something. Of course. People who sit around and wait for the good idea, it's never going to happen because it's not just going to strike you like that. You have to be working through it and trying many ideas to find the right idea. And that's including failing along the way, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, that's something that I, I can completely understand too because there are certain moments where you face a challenge and if you don't kind of go through it, then you'll never know, yeah. you know, what the outcome would be, right? So another thing I wanted to ask also, you know, with the uh, social media influence and stuff like that, um, you know, you have a background 
in media, you were saying, and yeah. it was broadcast, you said? Broadcast, broadcast? journalism, yeah. Journalism? So my mom is a journalist, and okay. I grew up literally, like, at three years old, watching her on TV, telling everyone that that was going to be my career as well, because I just <laughs> loved it. Yeah. And um, I still love it, mm -hmm. and I still love interviewing people, and I think it's so cool what you do. Oh, thank but, you. like, it's just, it, for me, it was more like I wanted to do something a little bit different where I wasn't working for someone because I love being able to travel and take off like tomorrow, you know, mm -hmm. just sp spontaneous. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I felt like the only way to really be able to like live my whole life that way is if I build something from scratch, not work for someone, not, you know, take a really good job with a really good contract and money. It's mm -hmm. more like, you know, I'm kind of, in a way, was kind of giving that up to create something. So that's why I say it was definitely a gamble. And it wasn't, like, a good idea. For, like, six months, people were telling me, like, why don't you just go back to work? You know, you have yeah, a yeah, great job. Like, this is a great opportunity. But I feel like, overall, I still have a great relationship with the station. And they offer me freelance work all the time. Okay. So yeah, I great. feel like I did make their yeah, yeah, decision. Yeah, no, of course. Well, you kept, the, yeah, you kept that connection. Yeah, and I'm friends with all my producers, and I just, I'm glad. I'm really fortunate to have that opportunity and those connections, but I'm very, very happy with, like, having my own thing and, like, making money for myself in the ways that I want, you know? And do you, um, like, if you could give yourself one piece of advice, like your, like your 12 or 15-year-old self, like, if you oh look back, <laughs> like, what's something that um, you would tell yourself, you None know. None of this is going to matter in a few years. Like, you yeah. know, when you're young and you stress about, I don't know. And at, in that time of my life, it was school. It was SATs and college. And mm -hmm. it's just crazy how we are preparing our whole life for college or, like, something that it's crazy. Like, I don't even use what I studied in school, you know, even though I think it's a great discipline tool to go to school. But yeah. it's just, like, I didn't even use it. So... I think kind of like you don't always know what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. I always thought that I had my whole life planned out. And it just didn't go the way I planned. It didn't go that but way at all. I'm yeah. happy about that. That's a good thing. No, okay. Good. Well, good. But good. Yeah. Glad that it's so positive results. Like, don't take life too seriously. Don't take, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Don't I can agree much. with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I can agree with that. I can still be telling myself that advice too. Yep. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I think I just want to kind of like finish this off with just like a couple of just random facts about you guys. So... If you, either either of you, I'm going to pass the mic to you as well. What is something besides the art that you like to do on your, let's say, if you have free time, on your free time, or maybe you have another, you know, skill or something that we don't know about? I love surfing. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, And cool. skateboarding. Awesome. What about you? Um, I love makeup. Makeup? <laughs> it's a fun hobby. I think a lot of girls like it. So I love makeup. Um, yeah. That's the one that comes to my head, so that's a big one. Yeah, no, for sure. So do I. So do you guys want to share your social media handles, websites, anything else that maybe people could reach you? Yeah, sure. My Instagram is Alec Monopoly, and my YouTube channel is Monops Vlog. Or just look up Alec Monopoly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so my Instagram is just my name, Alexa De Llanos, and my YouTube is the same. So just both of our names and the handle. And last but not least, you have a Manat potato and a Poppy steak menu, yeah. right? How'd that happen? Oh, man. Me and Poppy are best friends, and we've been dreaming about this restaurant opening for years. He put his famous Poppy steak that we used to grill at barbecues, and I put my favorite dish caviar, and mashed potatoes. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you. And you guys are more than welcome to stop by the station anytime you're around Winwood because I know you have murals all over the place. Okay. So thank you guys, and we'll see you later. Revolution 935.